All right, video seven, nearly there. So I'll just close the door because my wife will get moody otherwise because I'm interrupting her morning of television. Um, yeah, so this is video seven. This is actually quite a simple circuit, so I've been kind here and I've given you the circuit mainly because I'm sure if, if you can't build this circuit, which is just a switch and some LEDs by uh, Challenge 7, then no offence, but you probably haven't even got this far anyway, and therefore you wouldn't have seen it. So I'm hoping you can build this circuit dead easy. But I've made the flowchart, and I'm not going to show you the flowchart, I'll give you some tips on how to build it, but I'm just going to show you what it should do now. So if you press play, the idea is first time you press play, nothing happens when I press the switch once, all the lights come on. This is all explained up here, by the way, in the text. If I press the switch again, I get the light splashing, and this will just, the idea is it will keep flashing indefinitely until I hit the switch a third time, at which point it should now alternate. So bottom four, top four, bottom four, top four. And then if I press it a final time, I should get this kind of back and forth Knight Rider style. If you've ever seen Knight Rider, you got probably too young. There you go. And actually, sorry, finally, as it says, the fifth time, everything turns off. There we go. And if it's pressed a sixth time, the whole thing starts over again. Okay. So what we've really made here is just one of those, um, we've written the program for one of those sort of cheap LED uh, bicycle lights, the ones you get on the back and you press a button and just one button, but you can use the same button and each time you press it, you get a different mode with the lights. So... Um, in order to write this program in an efficient way, there are actually many ways to write it, but only one of them is, is the one I'm looking for. You're going to need to learn about some new um, flowchart commands called sub, return, and call. Uh, if you've ever done any programming, these are a little bit like, pr I think in programming they're called subroutines or procedures. And a way to think of them is we're going to be writing. Um, little mini programs that we can call upon from our main program. So if you imagine like if Windows was the main program then like Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, uh, PowerPoint, they'd all be programs that run within it. We're kind of doing a similar thing but a lot simpler with the flowchart. So now I'm going to pause it and delete my flowchart while it's paused so you lot can't see the solution. Alright. Um, remember, you need to know what input pin you've used. So I used input 1 and I used outputs, well, all of them basically 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So you are going to need the following commands digital, that's going to be for detecting our switch, outputs for turning things on, weights for determining how long they're on for. But the three new ones we're going to use today are these three here sub, return, and call. Now, just a little note, you'll notice that sub and return have got these little dotted lines um, that's supposed to indicate they're part of a pair, as in you can't have sub without return. So sub is kind of like your start, return is the end. Remember I said if you treat this like a mini program, you would write it between sub and return. Call um, does what it says, it calls upon the subroutine whenever we want to use it. Now, if any of you have done programming, call would be a bit like a go-to command um, or go to label command depending what type of programming language you're used to. It's uh, For those of you who have not done any uh, computer programming it will make sense once I've built the whole thing together and hopefully you'll see why we had to do it this way to make your program simple enough that it won't take up huge amounts of memory. All right. So I'm just going to make, you've got to make actually probably several different subroutines to achieve this challenge. I'm just going to make two and show you how to flick between them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write my subroutine first. So I'm going to make a subroutine that just flashes all the lights on and off. So the first thing to do is double click on the one called sub and give it a name. Now you can call it whatever you like, but I suggest you call it something that describes what it does. So this is called flash all lights. Um, I'm going to then make them flash. So get an output, turn all my lights on. Don't forget your captions. There we are. I'm going to turn them all on for, let's say, half a second. 
and then I'm going to turn all the lights off. Another output. And that's it. All I'm going to do is write it once. So it turns the lights on once for half a second, turns them off for half a second. Now you might think that's great. If you just press play with that, all that would happen is the lights would come on and on, on and off, sorry, once, and then nothing else would happen, which isn't particularly interesting. Um, just to show you the power of it now, I'm going to forget the rest of it. I'm going to put a call now into the main program and I'm going to use a stop. Now stop is a command we very very rarely use because it actually just kills the entire program dead and there's very rarely a situation with systems and control where you want the program to run once and stop forever but in this instance I'm going to use it and all I'm going to do is I put call into my main program, that's this lot, this is my sub program, my sub routine hence the name sub and if I click on call you'll see in the little drop down box I've got flash all lights to pick from and what's better is I can choose how many times I want to repeat flash all lights so I'm just going to pick five times um, for those of you who know about variables you can actually repeat based on a variable so you could measure something and get this to repeat based on how many on well, based on whatever you measured what number it measured it could make it repeat for that number of times but if you didn't understand what I just said there completely wipe it from your memory it's not important that's just for the more nerdy ones among you. So I'm going to make flash all lights happen five times. And what you'll see if we press play on here, I'll just bring up the digital inputs. So it jumped to there. And we're running quite slowly here. I'll just speed up the speed. Twice. Jumps over here three times. Jumps over there four times. Jumps over there five times. And stop. So what happens is this subroutine arrangement and using the call command allows you to write something once and use it over and over and over again. That's really the beauty of this and you're going to need that for your program because in your program it's supposed to flash forever and then when you press the button again it's supposed to switch to like alternating. Um, if you didn't use or didn't repeat code you would have a bit of an issue because you'd have to write out this little bit here over and over and over and over again having a flow chart as long as the Great Wall of China just to show just to make the lights flash on and off here we can be a lot more efficient by only writing the little bit of code once and then reusing it okay so it's a kind of structure we're learning about rather than um, anything too technical so just to jazz it up a bit now um, you can within reason you can have as many flow, uh, subroutines as you want uh, you're only limited by the amount of memory on the chip okay so I've designed this so there's more than enough memory to fit this program on that I've asked for assuming you've written it correctly so I've got one subroutine that flashes all the lights I'm gonna make a, another subroutine which is going to be called alternate remember to put my return in and all this is going to do is flash the I'm gonna make the first four LEDs and no, actually let's let's go crazy Let's make every other LED come on. Um, that's as crazy as you can go when doing this stuff. Right, so on this one I turned on 0, 2, 4, and 6. I'm going to wait for half a second and then I'm going to turn on 1, 3, 5, and 7. Give it some captions. So this would be first four LEDs, other four LEDs. And I'm going to wait for a quarter of a second, and then return. Okay. So I've got one subroutine that will just make every light flash on and off, and one subroutine which will make sort of opposite pairs light up. It'll alternate them. And just to show you the power of that, I could go and get my call command again. Now if I double click on it you'll now see there are two subroutines to pick from. I'm going to use alternate this time. I'm going to make alternate happen four times. I'm going to go back and make flash all lights happen twice. And I'm just going to put that on a loop. So what should happen is if we press play you'll get flash all lights twice. It might be worth putting a caption in because you can't see the times two. 
Okay, flash all the lights twice and then alternate them four times and then it will repeat that on a loop. So we can see it here if we press play once, twice, and now it will jump to run all times. So we've got the alternating pattern twice, three times, four times. Okay, and obviously that translates to the circuit as well. So if you press play here, two flashes, four alternates, three, four. Back to the two flashes. Okay, so I'm hoping you've understood the benefits of using subroutines there. It saves you a whole lot of coding, actually makes your program easier to read. Um, I'm going to let you now, I don't need to show you anymore because in the earlier programs you've already learned about using the digital command um, to detect when a button's pressed. And essentially you're writing a routine that every time a button is pressed, it will run a different subroutine. And it will then need to change to a different routine the next time a button is pressed. My only comment to you, I'm not going to show you it all again, is just remember that you can detect buttons being on, as in being pressed down, and also buttons being released by setting them to zero. You are going to need that um, idea of waiting until the button's been released before moving on to the next subroutine to get this to work as flawlessly as my one did in the demonstration. I'm not going to show you how to do it, you should remember it from the earlier videos. So if you can't remember, perhaps go back and redo video 2. Okay, but that's just my advice. The only other thing I'll tell you is it's going to be a pretty long flowchart. By the time you've written out your different subroutines, and particularly the very last subroutine, the uh, uh, the Knight Rider style one that goes back and forth, that's going to take up pretty much a whole page. Um, if you want to make your page bigger, you can just go to view uh, normal and that just gives you the whole screen so if you're struggling to fit everything on that A4 bit of paper you can do that. Right I hope that made sense um, you can see I'm giving you less and less help now because I'm assuming you've learned more and more as you go along so that's the end of video 7, one left to do and you'll be pleased to know video 8 is actually fairly straightforward. Okay.